morning we start our worship through song with a hymn that may not be as familiar, so you might want to look up the lyrics. Uh, it's, I sing the almighty power of God. If you have the United Methodist hymnal in front of you, it's hymn number 152 uh, in the United Methodist hymnal. I sing the almighty power of God. I'm going to play through it once through entirely so you get the tune in your head and then we can challenge you with the lyrics. Today is certainly a beautiful day, so I want to take this time and just say a prayer out here in God's nature. Why don't you join me in prayer? Gracious Father, we are grateful for all that you give to us. You are a generous God. You give us precious life, but also precious moments throughout our lives give us love, divine and beneficent from you, but also through the people we come in contact with every day. You show us your love through nature, you show us your protection through nature, and you guide and walk with us pneumatologically with the Holy Spirit each and every moment of our lives. We are thankful that you have given us Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, so that we can be truly the bearers of your image. It's because our bold devotion and love for Jesus, we too are bold to pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue in our worship through song this morning by singing an old familiar favorite hymn in the garden. <laughs> Oh, 
gospel reading for this week is Matthew 6, verses 19 through 34. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness! No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, for what you will eat and what you will drink, or about what your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all of these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
this morning, as you heard from uh, Pastor Heather's gospel reading, we're talking about the discipline of generosity and how that should be characterized um, at the base of our Christian lives. Um, so many people will think about Christianity and they'll want to be pure, which is noble, and that's fine. So many people will think of Christianity and they want to be prayer-filled, like we talked about last week, or devoted to God. Again, fine aspirations. And yet Jesus is constantly preaching and telling his followers to live generous lives. And the fact that you live a generous life, meaning that you um, are giving of your resources, whether that's financially, whether that is through your skills and talents, whether it's through time, whether it's through simply just listening and being present, that is actually um, a great testimony of God's abundance and God's great gifts. So when you are generous with whatever it is that you have, you are proclaiming how generous God is for sharing that with you. In the Sermon on the Mount, it's highly unlikely that Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount actually all at once. It's most likely a collection of quotes that were kind of um, you know gathered up and then portrayed as a sermon because those are the core teachings of the Christian faith. Those are probably everything that Jesus really harped on to his disciples and wanted them um, to uh, um, mold their lives in that kind of fashion. And it's interesting how they're organized. You know, they start out with the Beatitudes and how um, Jesus is really celebrating the upside-down theology of the day. He says, you know, you're not blessed when you are rich and mighty. Rather, you're blessed when you're poor and you have nothing. Um, you know, you're blessed when you're mourning a great loss because God's presence is there. And he goes on and on and on, and he starts to talk about who God is, who he is, and who his followers might be because of living in the image of God. And in this particular passage that we chose to speak about, he says, your treasure is where your heart is. And this is a convicting verse for me because... Um, you know, I, well, I mean, I, I am uh, diagnosed bipolar, and there are often long periods of my life where I'm deeply melancholy. And it, that verse convicts me in the midst of my depression because it reminds me that what my identity is, who I identify as, um, really is what I think to be important. Sometimes it helps me lift myself out. Um, although it's not the only um, the way, way out most of the time. It's a way that it, that it can remind me that there is spiritual truth, power, and generosity um, always around me as well. But it also talks about how we invest things in our own personal lives as well as uh, the church corporate life. If your churches devote nothing to uh, missions, outside missions, that tells a lot about what your church is. If your church devotes nothing to community um, um, uh, events or ministries, that tells a lot about who your church is. If your church only invests in robes and liturgical things, that says a lot about who your church is. If you're a United Methodist Church and you don't um, you know, pay your apportionments or support the United Methodist system, that tells you a lot about who your church is, whether you're, you know, you really uh, find United Methodism to be valuable or not. Not only does that say a lot about your church, but it also says a lot about yourself personally. And, um, you know, no preacher likes to preach about tithing or anything like that. It's always an uncomfortable subject. Finances are always uncomfortable to talk about. And Jesus breaks that barrier by making it really simple. He says you pay for what you want to pay for. And people can tell what you support and who you are because of that. He then also follows this beautifully with worry. Because I think a lot of us are not generous because we worry. You know, we're on the, in either the midst of a recession in the United States or really close to the beginning of a recession, depending on which uh, economist you follow. And that is concerning, because we know that our money is going to be devalued, which means the work that we put in last year is not going to be 
um, carry the same weight as uh, the expenses of this year. And that's a scary proposition. And Jesus knows that it's important that, uh, um, that you don't have to worry. You know, God um, has provided so much for us that he will not leave us in a situation that, although it may be difficult, that we don't survive. God is caring deep. And he says, even the lilies of the field uh, are clothed much more beautifully than the most royal people, reminding us that our value is not in our looks or appearances um, or in anything shallow, but rather the deep value that God places on us. If you had to do a um, inventory of your life, where would someone say your heart is? Your treasure is where your heart is. Where do you spend your most time? Where do you spend most of your money? Um, where do you, uh, um, yeah, where, do, where is the investment of your time going? That's where your heart is. And Jesus simply says you can't serve two masters. And he says it harshly, actually. Very, Jesus would be an awful preacher to be in a local church, like you would fire him almost every week, because he just says simply from there, you can't serve God and money. you got to choose. Although I've heard pastors say that, and I think it's very true, um, and to me it all stems back to you know, what did Jesus say was the most important thing? Love. Mm -hmm. Love one another. And generosity, to me, is an expression of that love. God is generous with us because God loves us. Je Jesus gave his life for us because he loves us. And if we can look with that love, if we can express that love that God shows us, think of how wonderful this world could be if we cared about the other, if we gave to each other and not live in fear. And I'll admit, I've gotten caught up in, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay these bills? How am I gonna, I'm getting in debt. Not fun things. No, nope. <clears throat> those are legitimate, real-life adult concerns. Yes, you know? they and, are. And they're seasonal sometimes, and sometimes yes. they're chronic. You yes. Know? <laughs> and if I give up the worry, and when I trust in God to provide, He always does. It always comes through, and I know my mom's family never had a lot of money, but I would say they were very wealthy in love and very generous. You know, my grandparents always were generous with their love, with their time, involvement with their children's lives, the school, with their neighbors, always pitching in to help. Isn't it funny how oftentimes the most impoverished people are the most giving people. Yes. And like you say, mm -hmm. and it, sometimes it is with money. Like I've known people mm -hmm. who are very impoverished that will save up so they can give special to a special cause. Yes. Or, I mean, it is just simple. They'll show up every day at your house with fresh baked bread or a pie. Yes. And it's the a most amazing thing in the world, you know? And yes. It's, and they're, they can't afford to do that, but they do it but as an expression. You know? And somehow they always manage. They mm -hmm. always get through. Yeah. And I know there are people who are really struggling and have good reason to struggle. But to me, you know, living in the fear, living in the struggle just makes it worse. And re I loved what you said about um, where your heart is. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, you know, one of the worst couple months of my life, when I attempted to teach English in South Korea, did not go well, and my heart was not there. Mm -hmm. You know, fairly early on, a couple things happened, it turned it off, and my heart was back in the U.S. And... I think that's part of why I struggled so, and I wonder, now I think it's still, I would have left early, but I wonder if it would have been easier to get through if I had at least made more of an attempt to put my heart where it belonged with the task at hand. Yeah, and that's a hard, that's not an easy thing to do, mm -hmm. especially, you know, in the context of this, mm -hmm. this sounds all bubblegum and, you know, cherry pie, everything is great, mm -hmm. but Jesus was telling people, like, take up your cross and follow me, and he knew, and it became true, that most of his early followers would die by execution. Yes. So it's not as if these were easy things, and the people he was speaking, he was speaking to, impoverished, you know, incredibly mm -hmm. impoverished, uh, mm -hmm. you know, third world wouldn't even come close to describing it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when you think about that as well, it's, mm -hmm. it's incredibly, 
Yeah, it, it, it is not an easy thing to do. And yet, if you think about when people have been generous to you in your life, and they have shown you the attention and the love and the care, and even if it's a little thing, you know, if it's someone else who can't really afford to give much, like giving a loaf of bread or, you know, something that they made themselves, how that makes you feel. And if you could turn around and kind of almost the idea of pay it forward, mm -hmm. which often gets used, but I love the expression, that you are generous in return or paying it forward onto someone else. And that spreading of that love, that you feel loved when someone is generous with you. So why would you not want to share that and help produce that feeling for someone else? Yeah. You know, you had mentioned uh, about worry sometimes mm -hmm. being uh, um, the crux of generosity. Because, you know, like you said, how can I afford to do anything if mm -hmm. I'm in the midst of this? I don't, have you ever seen the movie or read the book, The Life of Pi? Yes. I loved the quote in there that the father says that when you worry, you suffer twice. Yes. You know, and, he, and they talk about the lion, mm -hmm. you know, like if a lion's going to eat you, you can worry about it all day long, uh, and then you're mm -hmm. already anxious, but he's going to eat you anyways. So yes. you might as well just suffer once. And yes. I think, you know, Jesus teaches us so many of those practical lessons in mm -hmm. the Sermon on the Mount, too, like... You know, mm -hmm. if you live your life in worry, or if you live your life, and this is something that is counterintuitive to Americans today because we're all about saving up for retirement mm -hmm. and, um, um, like, being well off or even just set in our old age. And that's part of our culture. But Jesus is literally telling us, and not only in this passage, but many times, don't save up for the future because God, of, mm -hmm. the God of the future is the God of now. Um, and when you think about all the things that, saving and again i'm a hypocrite here because i have a retirement fund and annuities and stuff like that but when you think about all those things that saving does it actually robs um the opportunity of the community because the way that god has created society is that the younger people take care of the older people and if you have a retirement because you're worried about you know having to take care of yourself you teach younger people not to be involved in older people's lives and we've mm -hmm. created this culture of this now where everybody is so individual mm -hmm. and so separate that it's hard to be a community of god mm -hmm. um and and wealth sharing is part of that you know we when preachers get too out of control talking about sharing resources we're accused of being communist um or socialist or or anything like that and it becomes a political battle but Jesus doesn't make it about politics. He makes it about God. He says, God created all of this world, this mm -hmm. great stuff for you, resources literally mm -hmm. coming out of the ground to, to sustain you. Why would you worry? And why would you not pay, you know, pay mm -hmm. it forward in the same mm -hmm. way? So Definitely. And again, I think, you know, just that love of God from God God of love, mm -hmm. that's to me one of the most beautiful expressions is sharing the resources and appreciating. Yeah. You can appreciate without hoarding. Yeah. So sharing and yeah, if someone is hoarding and trying to use what they've accumulated as a status symbol, for people who truly love God and love each other that is not going to be impressive. Mm. The people that I've most respected and admired are the ones who are generous, who do care and share mm. all they have. That's the kingdom of God. It is. Bring about the kingdom on earth. Mm. That's the way to do it. Amen. We conclude our worship through song this morning by singing God of the Sparrow and God of the Whale.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many gifts that you have given us. Let us use them wisely and be generous in all ways as you have taught us. We praise you and are thankful for our blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis a melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of There rings a melody with heaven's harmony 